Hey, this is Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and this is Tuesday, October the 2nd. This will be our chart lesson for today. I'm going to do something a little bit different today. I've already marked the trades on the chart, as you can see, but I didn't mark anything else. And what I want to show you is, is just looking at this chart and where I've got these trades marked now, um, it's really hard to say, how did you know to go short here, 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 here? How did you know to go long in these places? And so I'm going to show you how important it is that you learn how to read a chart, you learn how to find the proper trend lines, and then you learn how to trade accordingly. Um, you've heard me say it before, you want to enter at key um, key entry points, and those are along the, those are pullbacks to the trend line, the EMA and uh, bounces off strong support or strong resistance. And uh, hopefully you can easily see, I mean, maybe when we were at this point of the day, it's, it's you know, you don't necessarily know that this is a downtrend day. But still, the trend now is down. Look at this. We're making lower highs and lower lows. Can you see that? That's a downtrend regardless of where we're headed even if we're going to go up, it, you know, you got to wait for some kind of reversal pattern before you trade. Uh, so right now, we've got a downtrend. And so what you want to do is you want to put your, you've already got these two swings right here. You want to put your, um, it's probably like, about like, I can't get anything done for the phone ringing here. Uh, I'm going to pause this. Just Okay, sorry, I'm back. So anyway, this is all we have at this point. So I'm going to put this line on here. But there was another reason you knew to take this short right here. And let me show you this. You should have had, um, you've got this double top right here. So even though you don't have a trend line yet, you know prices, prices are going down. And there actually was a long right here, but this was before the 830. And I believe this... I believe this was the first trade yet, 8.30 right here. This is where the market opened. It opened at kind of a double, triple top right here. And notice this little stem, and then we got a couple of little tiny bars. So this is strong resistance across here. So this is a great place to look to get short, to at least ride it back to the EMA. So that's what you got at this point. So hopefully that's clear. And I'm always telling people it's generally the first two swings of the overnight, and you actually should have had another trend line coming off up through here like this and that as you can see would have alerted you to the um, this long right here if you were trading right at 830 there was a nice little setup right there and I probably should have marked that but it was in all this overlap and uh, we already kind of had this lower high and lower low but this is a good trade right here and uh, so if you took that long that's okay too uh, but I didn't mark it because of all the overlap. There is a little trap right there and then reversed up right at the open. Um, but this was the better setup, and you can see how prices moved down. But now you've got the first two swings, and you got kind of the, um, a line off the first two bottom swings. But notice this. We finally broke this trend line, and then we tried to come up and test it. And actually, this trend line is probably more like that right there and you can see we broke that trend line and came back and tested I, I've been telling you all to kind of watch for this and and this is just a short-term trend line because the trend is really down and um, it was down from yesterday and we did have a little rally but that usually happens and then we're down again but so far that's all you got so but look what happens as you back out of here look what happens when prices came back to the trend line boom notice that setup there and then notice um, then again, we got another little double top here. You got this double top here with another little failed break above it, and it's kind of a similar setup to this right up here. And look what happened. And then normally what you got to do is get a copy of that trend line right there and find the lower side. And I really thought this was it at first, but... Um, and that's why you did, you knew that we it really wasn't even though we tried to rally there it really wasn't time yet uh, because we never have touched this lower trend channel and generally you will and 
And you could have drawn it like that, and you wouldn't have necessarily been wrong, probably, because that still fits. But I'm thinking it was more like um, this right here, and you can see we bounced off of it again down here. We just overshot it right here. But um, just another little quick clue. There's there's your first leg down, and then there's your second leg. And look, it's almost a perfect move down. So, uh, But now you can see how all these trades kind of fit and why they look good. And again, you got a double top right here. So you got another double top right across there. Uh, we broke above that, so it's a failed break higher. It really is coming off that trend channel line, or off that trend line. And look at that move down. Notice how all your best moves come right off the trend line. And then your next best move is a two-legged pullback to the EMA. And, you know, we're on the way back down to test the lower side. And then what happens? We bottom out, but notice this too. got another kind of a double bottom kind of a strong support area and we actually had one back here too notice that and that's a failed break below that double bottom and at this and at this point I really thought that was probably going to be the trend channel line and that and, you, and that really may be the trend channel line with just a bigger overshoot right here and in fact, uh, now that I look at it, that probably is it. Because um, you see we hesitated right there before we broke on through there. And uh, so that may actually be it right there. And then you got a double break of it. And that usually, and this is, this is a reversal pattern. Notice that we got a double bottom across here with a failed break lower. And then we rock it out here. And you got two tries to go below the trend channel line. And that usually sets up a reversal. And look what happened. We reversed the whole rest of the day. So draw these lines on there. You don't want to keep them on there all day. As you move along, you may want to take some of these off because they start to kind of clutter up your chart. But hopefully you can understand why we took all of those shorts that I just showed you. Now, I marked these longs. Um, they're really risky trades, but I wanted to just to show you uh, what I'm looking for. But notice right here, we got a double bottom, a failed break lower, and a double bounce off that trend channel line. That's a great place to go long. But even without the trend channel line, you got a reason to go long there because it's strong, um, kind of strong resistance right there. And then, um, then you came down here. Now we've broken below it. And, but now notice you got this double bottom, you got this big stem, and then you got a little doji right there along the support. Great place to go long. That was a nice, quick, easy trade uh, that I traded back to the upside. And I don't recommend that everybody trade those. You're better off on trend days to stick to these trades up here because there were plenty of them. And they were all good setups. And uh, notice there's a big bearish bar almost on every one of them. Either that or you had a little bitty tiny doji right up there. Now notice this one you had kind of a stem on this and a doji, so that wasn't a good one. Plus look how bullish that was coming up there with no real pullback yet. And plus we'd had the reversal pattern. That's the main reason you got to know to be careful going short right here. Now if you shorted that blindly, you probably still got your four ticks. But uh, you had to get in really high up here. You didn't have enough room. And it just really wasn't a good short at all. Uh, it's way too late in the day. We're coming off a failed reversal, a reversal type pattern. Um, we overshot the trend channel line at least once. And even if you drew it like this, then we came up short. So either way, um, you got kind of a reversal pattern down there. But now that I look at that, I believe that is the trend channel right there. And uh, that fits really well on both sides of uh, the price action. So, um, And sometimes you, you don't have to get this exact. That's a perfect example. Uh, assuming that you had it down here, it still works. Or even if you brought it down here, it still works. Uh, it gives you the same information. Um, so, But draw your lines and put them on there. Now, with these lines on here, all of these entries should make sense to you and should be crystal clear where if you didn't have all that, you're probably looking at it and go, why would you know to go short in any of these places or go long in any of these places? But now it should be real clear to you and it should make perfect sense why we did it. Um, so again, you've got a double bottom here. You got a failed break lower. Uh, you got a failed break below the 
trend channel line you got another double bottom with a failed look at that big stem that's telling you something a lot of buying was coming in right down here and then you got this little bar that's kind of got the bullish that you need to go long and there's plenty of room to get out before the EMA nice quick scalp there um, same thing over here we tried we had a failed second entry short that reversed and went long so you could have gone long here and even here because then you got a second entry actually this was a second entry long off the low but this is a breakout pullback long I didn't really mark it but it's there as well so um, plenty of reasons to take those trades so learn to spot this stuff learn to see it and hopefully that all makes sense to you I did get a couple of emails uh, actually let me show you a couple other things too I've been working on this but you notice that trend line coming up there we broke it then we came back and tested it and then sold off and this is a breakout pullback <laughs> excuse me there's this is a breakout pullback short so there was actually a short right there um, coming back down to test this breakout area right here um, so there was really a long right in here too there was a short here and a long here but of course I didn't mark these because this was you wouldn't have had this line here yet um, you didn't really know where it was at this point so um, but all you had was you had this overlap way away from the MA, and this is where all the dummies go short. Or the the I shouldn't call them dummies because some of y'all probably did it, and I've done it before too. But I know better now. When you start to get this overlap way away from the EMA, that's just a sucker entry, and you're better off to have you a buy limit order here and fade that and ride this back to the EMA because that's usually what happens. Look what happened up here. You got this overlap. It broke higher, and then look what happens. It snaps back. Right down here, you got all this overlap. It breaks lower. Of course, this one's not way away from the EMA, but it is still. Breaks lower, fails, and it snaps back. Same thing right here. Um, then look what happens down here. You get this overlap. There's no touch of the EMA during all that fall. It breaks lower, and then it snaps back. And I can show you this over and over and over and over. It's the most reliable setup on the whole in the whole ES, in my opinion. But until you learn it, it's one of the hardest ones. So you got to learn it because you don't want to be getting short up here in the middle of all this sell-off. And that happens sometimes or getting um, long. Um, I guess it's, I should say getting long in all this sell-off or getting short in all this rally right here at the wrong place. you gotta, you got to understand it because look here, we had that. We had a lot of overlap. And we broke higher and tried, but we it didn't come back here. Uh, it was all the way up here before that happened. So you got to know how to read this stuff, and you got to know what's going on uh, before you try doing that. But just start watching for that if you're not already. But let's go back to this. I'm gonna try to wrap this up. Notice all these how I got that trend line right there, and then we broke it. We came back and tested it. I can show you this all the way up through here. Here's another one. It's probably right here. It's usually off the closes is where you get the best. And that's probably it right there. And we kind of broke it and came back and tested it. But really when you, we ran into this other resistance and it kind of, I've noticed usually when it's coming off that, you don't get as good a signal as you do. Um, and then watch this one. Notice all that. And notice how I've got that trend line. You can see prices working off that trend line. And then all of a sudden we break it. We come back and make a new low. And then we get a two-legged correction. Then you got this little trend line coming up right through there. We broke it. We come back and make a new high. And then look what happens. Boom. I can show you this. this I'm, you know, I'm really starting to see this work quite a bit. And there you go. You got all those little, we're using that trend line. We finally broke it right there. Came back and tested it, and then we rallied up. Then you got one, a little short-term one right here. And we broke that little trend line, came back and made a new high, and then look, sold off. Came back and retested the low. This one's probably, that looks pretty good right there. We broke that one, 
came back and tested the high and then sold off. Then we had one coming down. We broke it, came back and tested that low and then went higher. And I can show you this over and over and over. And these are not always easy to find. I will grant you that. But try to put them on there because sometimes they're obvious like this one. That's pretty, you know, it's pretty straightforward. We broke it and then came back and made a new low. And it's, you know, it's a lot of times it's these. See, here's one. We were coming down. We broke above it and then we sold off. This we sold off here more on the break of this one, I believe, and coming off this trend channel line here. So, anyway, it doesn't hurt to put those on there. Just be sure after you're done with it, you clean them off because if these start to pile up, they will confuse you and get in your way. And you don't want to get your chart so cluttered with stuff that you can't read it, but you want to know what's going on on your chart at the same time. And these are just easy, all they do is make it visually. Um, easier to see visually in other words so you can just glance at your chart because like I said with these two lines on there this channel is clear as a bell but when I first opened up the chart a lot of you're probably looking at it and I'm like how do you know to go short there and there and go long in those spots but now it should be real clear to you one other thing I want to mention um, I got some emails about this <laughs> excuse me I'm sorry when I get to talk and I still have not gotten I've gotten over this chest this head this Brazilian guru stuff that I brought back from but I still my throat is not a hundred percent if I get to talking a lot I, I it starts bothering me again hopefully one day I'm gonna shed myself of this completely but um, but anyway uh, several of you questioned me about this gap and I've reloaded my data a hundred times and that gap is still there so I don't know if it's a problem with my data or what but I still believe even if there was prices moving up through here that the overnight gap is there because the 830 the market didn't open at 830 let's see where it opened it opened right there and I've checked this closing price and my closing price is good from Friday so there's still a gap there even if there was trading going on and I've showed that to y'all before um, the gap we're talking about is from the 8.30 open, the regular open, even though I like to keep all the price action on there because I think it's relevant. Um, the regular 8.30 open was here, and this is where we closed on Friday. So that gap was still there, and, and everything we talked about was still relevant, um, even if there is price action going on in here. And I'm going to try to reload my chart again tomorrow and just see if that ever goes away. But... It still seems to be on my chart, so I don't know if there was an issue or not. It doesn't really matter because after reviewing it, the gap is still there. It's still relevant, and it all still, everything we talked about in yesterday's video is still relevant. So um, hopefully that answers the questions for some of y'all that were questioning that. Uh, I got a couple of different emails um, saying that my data was a little bit different, and for whatever reason, I have this gap and you know sometimes you, you, your charts just don't load properly for whatever reason but I've reloaded my chart three or four times a day and that gap is there still so I don't know if it's um, if there was actually any trading going on during there in the overnight and for some reason CQG was down or missed it or whatever but like I said there's still the gap between the oh the close Friday and the 8:30 a.m. open right here on Monday so it's still a gap and all that's still relevant that we talked about your chart may look slightly different but it's all relevant so and we had another one this morning you notice we closed yesterday right in this area at 1436 1437 area um, we closed at uh, actually 1436.75 and when we opened at 830 this morning we were right here so there's a gap there same thing and notice how we worked our way lower and that's why we started getting resistance right in here because we filled that gap and a lot of people were trying you know the bear the bulls were trying to drive it higher after filling that gap but they couldn't do it and the selling pressure was too strong and we continued lower and this is a clue right here when we didn't even get back to this trend line after coming off this lower side 
uh, right here. That's a sign that the market's weak. And so that was another clue that you may get this, uh, you may get a measured leg, which we did get. And then we finally, and see, we still struggle to get back up here. And then we overshot this trend channel again uh, a little bit down here. And then that's kind of a reversal pattern. It's a double, triple, quadruple bottom. We tested that one, two, three, four, four, five times there. And before we finally broke below it, uh, we actually broke below it on the fifth time. But notice we still close back up here. That's buying that indicates buying pressure and so you see that a lot of buying down in here and then finally we rallied out of there so that's kind of a reversal pattern so we're at 20 minutes into this hopefully you um, had a good trading day uh, it was a really good day today in my opinion uh, one of the uh, easier days to trade because uh, it was all downhill we did get a little bit of it got a little weak really right in here from about 11 o'clock to 2 o'clock um, but still, there were some nice little moves in here as well. You just had to be patient. But that's why I like to get through by noon. And you see that all the good trading was before noon. So, But I'm going to wrap it up. This is Matt with PriceActionTradingSystem.com. And we'll see you next time.